Tonight, uh, our goal is simply to tell you a little bit about Faith Lutheran High School. Of course, there's a lot, a lot to know, and so we're going to do our best to put our, our best foot forward and, and talk to you about that. We have a couple of presentations that we'll have that you'll have an opportunity uh, to hear those presentations. One, uh, Mrs. Shauna Light is going to talk to us, and Mrs. Light is a parent in our school. She's had one uh, son graduate from our high school, he has a son currently in our high school, and has several prospective FLHS Lions uh, coming up. And so we're glad to have her uh, visit with you. Also, our high school principal, uh, Mr. Merritt, we'll talk to you a little bit about curriculum and things of that sort. And he also uh, has had uh, two, three, three graduates uh, from Faith Lutheran High School. Uh, one, the last one, who made empty nester uh, in, in our school right now. Um, also, we'll have opportunity to hear from one of our students, one of our bright, shining stars, uh, Micah. Yay. I do like to get him to smile if, if, I, uh, if I try hard. Uh, Micah. Micah has um, Micah has a unique story and a unique perspective, and I think it's good that we have some students here tonight because I think students like to hear from students. So Micah. Michael will tell you about his, uh, his experience as well. And of course, um, I'll share a few thoughts uh, tonight. And uh, I have, goodness, one, two, three graduates also of uh, Faith Lutheran High School. And Abigail is in uh, the sophomore. And I still have a couple more that have the great opportunities. So I'll share all those things with you tonight. Let's have an opening prayer, and then we'll introduce this light. So let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the one who carries along the Holy Word of God and works faith in our hearts. We thank you that uh, here at and in Plano, we have the opportunity to hear and to learn and to continue to explore all your truths in your holy word. We thank you for the, uh, the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the knowledge of his life for us, his great sacrifice, his suffering and death for us, his resurrection and ascension and his living and reigning today for us, and for our salvation. And that truth we get to live in here at our school, and we get to have the opportunity to praise and pray and give thanks to you. We pray that as we think about high school, in some ways, Lord, it seems so far off when our children are young, and yet it, it comes so quickly. We pray that you would give us a peace of mind about high school decisions. We pray that you would continue to bless Faith Lutheran High School and the great blessing it has already been to so many families and so many students, students who are in college and university now, those who are, are out of college and university and started families, our many alum, we thank you for each and every one of them. We pray that you would bless our time together tonight we pray that what we say and do may be done to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as I said, uh, Mrs. Uh, Shauna Light, uh, her son Nathan graduated from our high school last year and is an engineering, pre-engineering, engineering student at University of Texas, Dallas. And... Uh, he has had the opportunity to have four years here at Faith Lutheran School, and I'd like to give her a chance to, to go first. She has a PowerPoint presentation, so come on up here, and we'll get the lights for you. Good evening, everyone, and I would like to...
gave a presentation on why our family chose Faith Lutheran High School. Um, and by the way, maybe a little known fact, the high schoolers know it. It is the largest classical Lutheran high school in the United States, right? <laughs> so yeah, we're special. It is special. <laughs> um, the reason why our family chose Faith Lutheran was, in the beginning, was because we wanted to have support as Christian parents in teaching our kids the Christian faith. Because God has commanded us to love Him with all our heart, soul, and might, and then He says that we should teach His commands diligently to our children and talk of them when we sit at our house, when we walk by the way, when we lie down, and when we rise, which is actually a big responsibility as parents and we feel that being educated at faith helps support us in this important task especially since they are taught um, the bible they have devotions and the high school students read the entire bible over the course of four years and they are taught by pastors who are educated in biblical languages and helping answer maybe tough questions about the Bible as well. So we are thankful for that biblical foundation here. And also, it is a Lutheran school. I'm going to include a quote from Martin Luther. Um, he said, above all, the most important and most usual teaching in both the universities and the lower schools ought to be concerned with the Holy Scriptures. Oh, how unwise, wisely we deal with our poor young folk, whom we are commanded to train and instruct. But we shall have to give a serious account of our stewardship and explain why we have not set the word of God before them. We fail to notice the present pitiful distress of the young people, though they live in the midst of a Christian world. They faint and perish in misery because they lack the gospel in which we should be training and exercising them all the time. And for our family, we wholeheartedly agree with this and are thankful that Faith Lutheran does include biblical teaching in actually all the classes, and it comes from a biblical worldview. And I do believe that, sadly, a lot of young people, particularly at the high school age, don't have as much hope especially in the public school, because they lack this scriptural training that does bring hope. And another thing, well, before I get to that, um, now that my oldest is in a secular college, I do see where some of the teachings, I can't even name them here, that he has told me about, that kind of demeans a person as a human being, rather than offering them hope, so I can already attest what it's like out there in the world, that stuff that I'd rather him not be taught, but um, but unfortunately, secular universities don't respect the parents' authority, and that's what I appreciate about faith, too, is because they respect the Christian parents' authority, and you know what your children will be taught here. Unlike in the public school or the secular universities, they <coughs> take all kinds of liberties. That's what I would say, um, that go against what we would teach our children. Um, another thing I like about Faith Lutheran School, or keeping your children at Faith Lutheran School, is um, your children have gone through the grammar phase, where they've learned a lot of facts and have memorized a lot of things, and they've gone through the logic phase, and they've studied cause and effect and start to ask why. But the nice thing about college, I mean, high school is that they go into the rhetoric phase of the classical model, and they are taught wisdom. And they are taught wisdom from the Bible, as well as a lot of uh, books, which you can look at later. And I found, I was trying to find a good definition of rhetoric, and I found one online. <laughs> um, it's... Rhetoric was defined at this website of the use of knowledge and understanding to perceive wisdom, pursue virtue, and proclaim truth. So here at Faith Lutheran, they can 
proclaim the truth of the Bible, and they can also know that there is absolute truth, which our society doesn't always acknowledge. Um, another thing is that, speaking of wisdom, they will learn wisdom from non-Christians as well, from ancient literature that has stood the test of time. An example I put here that they talk about in class is wisdom taught by Marcus Aurelius. He was a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, and he wrote this book. Was it to his son, Mr. Merritt? Or yeah, okay. primarily. primarily for his son, to teach his son. Now what's interesting is that he was known to persecute Christians. So sadly he persecuted Christians, yet unlike we don't throw his book away and say, well he did. Like a lot of in our society now, if you do anything wrong, they throw it out. But um, they still teach the wisdom in this book, even though he persecuted Christians. Um, and he um, had this quote of, Today I have got out of all trouble, or rather I have cast out all trouble. Or was not outside, but within, and in my opinion. So to start teaching humility, which I believe is important today. <laughs> Because of this, I have some pictures of non-humility examples. <laughs> um, so Faith Lutheran teaches biblical historical wisdom and truth, but I do feel like in a lot of our high schools now, there is more emotional selfishness and a postmodern relativism that forms the worldview of what's being taught. So I just have some pictures here where, um, in this case, the students were protesting against a teacher, so they don't have respect for authority. And then also, um, here, students are holding up signs saying free education, like, actually, they should learn that nothing in life is free. Somebody has to pay for it. Teachers have to work, and they shouldn't have to work for free to give you a free education. <laughs> so all these things, but students are taught to, sadly, be more emotional rather than learn facts, search for truth, and also um, gain wisdom in the process. And that is what I like about faith, is that they read a wide variety of books um, to help gain this wisdom. Um, and one other thing about this, I have told in other one presentations, but when we visited Texas A&M University, this is an example of kind of the self-centeredness going on a tour of the campus, like I went there three years ago, and they would not have done this back then. <laughs> but as we got to the library, they were like, oh, this is our library, and during finals week, we bring out the puppies. So they, <laughs> they, I mean, it's a nice sort of gesture, but now students, unfortunately, in the more progressive model of education are coddled and not taught as much rigor, like, that it's worth it to do hard things um, in life. And rather they bring out the puppies to help the students cope with the stress of finals. But um, that's the world we live in. Colin also has a coloring room. Right, and at Colin College, our you students go that go there, they had offered coloring pages. So to leave stress, you can go color. <laughs> stress. However, we also need to learn how to deal with stress. And um, some ways are better than others. Okay. So now to talk about the benefits of Faith Lutheran. Um, there is technology, but I feel like um, in general technology is kept in its place here. Like your student would have a laptop that they would use to do their homework on. Um, when I say kept in its place, my understanding is that in high schools now, a lot of homework is done and submitted online. So um, some people might like that, but I think there is benefit to actually not reading a book online, but holding a book in your hand, and that's what um, they, your students would get the paperback books and read them right here, not on a screen constantly, because um, I do feel like kids are exposed to a lot of technology, a lot of screens, um, so I don't think your child will be lacking in technology just because they went here, they get exposed to it daily. Um, and when they go to Colin, um, 
like they had their chemistry book, for example, was online. It was more expensive to buy the book. So they do get exposure to that method of everything being online, the book and the um, homework assignments. You have to submit it all electronically, which I'm kind of like, so then do the teachers grade anymore? <laughs> it's all done somehow more automatically. Another benefit of Faith Luther in high school is that um, there are a wide variety of extracurricular activities that everyone is encouraged to participate in if they so desire. Um, TACA is the Texas Association of Christian Athletes. So if your child would like to play football, as an example, right now they practice at Faith on our facility and at our facility and um, they welcome any students here to play football with them. And then um, the high school has played rec basketball and rec volleyball. They did co-ed volleyball and... Um, Cross country too. Thank you. I need to update my slide. <laughs> Micah brought up, which is a good point, they, have to, they do cross country as well. And um, also, faith requires that you have 60 hours of volunteer service that's required to graduate, and 40 of those hours can be at faith. Like for Vacation Bible School, if you help with that, that counts. Um, but this also helps when you apply for colleges because now they like to see some volunteer service often on your college application. And at one point, not right now, but they had ultimate frisbee on Fridays. Um, they have a high school choir that actually meets more than twice a week, sorry. <laughs> but my slide, my slide is a little update. But they meet often and they have a choir tour, which has been lots of fun in the past. We've gone to others. Sometimes we've gone within the state of Texas and others out of state. And we've had a great time on the choir tour. <laughs> And another thing that to me is an excellent opportunity and it's a trip of a lifetime is going, going to Europe. Um, they've done this several years. Um, and like my oldest went on the 17 day trip and um, he loved it. It's really neat to be taught um, the history and about a lot of the people that lived in those areas and then actually go see where they walked and spoke and were well known and just kind of bring it all to, to life, make it real. Um, they, Faith Lutheran offers art and band and there are piano teachers here available, also violin. Strings, yes. Strings, yes. So many opportunities for music which is part of the classical model as well. And there are a lot of high school socials and outings, and they schedule so many this year they could hardly do them all. <laughs> and um, so they've gone to Six Flags, they've had lock-ins, gone to special movies like, um, well, like... Endgame. Which one? Endgame. Endgame this year, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, they have a lot of fun with that. It's kind of um, controlled by the students themselves. So the student council works on that. So they have a lot of say in what they do. So if your student has a strong interest in something, they can propose it, and the student council can probably help that become a reality. And they've had some great dances. They're about to have another one in December, a Christmas dance that will be more of a formal. They're looking forward to that. And these dances aren't just like you get up there and you just, I don't know, <laughs> do a random dance. They were like, they trained, they trained hard to be able to do swing dancing. And now is it waltzing? Waltzing and foxtrot. Oh, nice. So that is really 
unique to me. <laughs> the thing this is dance that, is going to be really cool too because we, we rented a party bus. So we're all going to load on the party bus and go over to where we eat and come back. On. So it's a 54 person <coughs> one with the leather seats and everything. It's going to be really cool this year. So cool. <laughs> right. And so there's so many activities in the high school. You don't have a lot of extra time or at least our family doesn't. So that is really good because it keeps the kids busy and active, really. It does. And there are also outside activities that students have participated in, like um, David Bork is in Civil Air Patrol, and that's local. Um, so there's, as you know, so many activities already they can get involved in in this area. So. Several have been playing outside orchestras and bands as well. Um, another benefit of Faith Lutheran is the small class size. Um, you can't fall through the cracks easily because there aren't as many of you to disappear in the class. <laughs> and um, another thing along those lines is I appreciate that you can't have your cell phone out and uh, be texting while you're in class. I really appreciate that because I don't. my understanding is that's not necessarily true at the public school. So... Um, it's not easy to learn when you have that distraction. Um, participation is encouraged because I know like my oldest son was not always uh, that talkative, so Mr. Merritt could encourage him to answer the question at times if he wasn't, if he was staring off in some other direction. So I appreciate that as well. Um, also, I believe in a small school, I went to a small school, I believe a small school can help you develop friendships with people you might not always be friends with just because you're together. And that means you could be friends with someone older than you or that has different interests than you as well. Um, and again, a lot of the things at Faith Lutheran are driven by the students. It can also be driven, parents can also have input, like if you have a strong interest in like one parent has talked about getting a debate team. <gasps> We'd love to do it. <laughs> but so we just haven't done it. But there are things like that that can come true with the right, uh, like if the teacher can support and the parent can definitely work on making those things happen. And, um, so the students have a lot of input on what they do for activities. Another thing is I do feel like Faith Lutheran prepares you for college. And like my oldest is in college now. He did well on the PSAT, even though, I mean, um, I think the amount that you read and are exposed to, his verbal score was very high. <laughs> And I was shocked by that because he was not a reader as a kid. He liked to look at pictures of books of airplanes. And, uh, but he really did get into the reading here. It was interesting to him and he wanted to read it all. Um, because it actually is wisdom handed down throughout the ages. So it does spark the student's interest, I believe. It teaches them truths that have stood the test of time and they can become very interested in that and want to learn more. Um, also, I believe that the rigor of the curriculum develops good study habits and time management because my first son who's in college was like, oh, I have free time, I'm gonna go practice piano or <laughs> While my one who's in high school currently was like, oh, I have so much hope. <laughs> He had homework and had to do reading, but so I guess I'm saying is college can actually feel a little bit less because they were well prepared here with um, keeping up. Well, you many of you are most of you are in school here, so you already realize that there is a, it is somewhat challenging. But you can start school and on day three have a test. <laughs> that I always admire about here. They don't always talk. I would say that certain things are hard to experience other places. Again, it's a close-knit group. Um, this is like a tea party of all things that they... And they, before this, they, the boys were all practicing how to tie ties and doing it in various ways. That was kind of funny. Um, 
They also went to the Dallas Symphony and had a good, that was a nice outing there. I was at that one. And this is from <laughs> oh, the, yes. when they had swing dancing. <laughs> and that was actually, I have been to dances like when I went to high school and to me this was like the best dance I've ever seen because the kids had something to do they and had more fun doing it than like I say I've ever seen before. But they invited students they know outside of faith to come as well and those students absolutely loved it too. So it was a special event and uh, there's just that was dancing too. <laughs> um, and then I asked Slade, what does he like about Faith Lutheran High School? And he said, the fact that everything we're taught is presented from a Christian worldview, but we also learn about what others believe and why they believe what they believe. For example, like, um, I don't know if it's on top here, but um, at one point the students were talking about the Muslim faith and they wanted to read the Quran. So one thing they will do here is read the Quran, even though it is in our belief system, but it is helpful to know what Muslims teach and believe and then talk about the differences between that and the Christian faith. So um, that is a strong point of the classical model, I feel, as well, because they go, they don't read about somebody that wrote about the Quran. They go to the original source and read what it says. So um, that's what Slade is saying there. Um, you can learn about what others believe and why they believe what they believe. I believe you have more freedom and faith to learn about all kinds of different thinkers throughout history. Or um, people like Shakespeare. They still read Shakespeare here rather than throwing them out because they don't fit the multicultural view now. So that's what I'm saying, or saying it's too difficult for students. Faith does not say that. And Shakespeare in its original content as opposed to uh, some registration. Right, like a watered down version yeah. is more the original text, yes. So thank God for that. <laughs> um, so, um, in summary, why Faith Lutheran High School Online, I found a quote from Cheryl Swopes. She is a classical Lutheran educator who is with the CCLE that Pastor Keeper is head of. And I liked her definition of classical Lutheran education. I thought it fit Faith Lutheran High School well. It says, classical Lutheran education seeks to cultivate in students self-knowledge, tools for learning, the ability to contemplate great ideas and an understanding of the world in which he lives, all for the love and service of others. Above all, classical and Lutheran education inclines a child towards truth, goodness, and beauty found fully and eternally in the person and work of Jesus Christ. This is most certainly true. So I feel like here the students are free to learn as well as grow in their Christian faith rather than it being discouraged. So that is what my family is very thankful for and why we are thankful for Faith Lutheran High School. Maybe there's some questions about the uh, curriculum. And I've asked Mr. Merritt especially to talk about the structure of four years what the students uh, will learn over those four years, um, requirements of, of our high school. And so a lot of other things that Mr. American talked about, but given our time, I thought, thought he could especially help you with that. So Mr. Merritt is our uh, high school principal. He is also uh, our primary lead high school teacher. And when Faith Lutheran High School started, <coughs> 12 years ago, uh, Mr. Mr. Merritt was, uh, uh, took the lead in, in making that happen, with, along with our congregation and many others who supported that. So thank God for Mr. Merritt and his work among us. So Mr. Merritt, will you come forward and talk to us a little bit about the, the <coughs> curriculum for the four years?
All right, so I'm supposed to talk to you guys a little bit about um, how the curriculum is uh, set up here at Faith Lutheran. Um, I don't know how many of you have looked into the way that the state does their curriculum nowadays, but there's there's been a pretty significant shift in the way that uh, public schools are now doing high school. Um, they are now doing high school where you can choose specialties. Uh, I To me, that seems a little bit silly considering most college students don't even know what they actually want to study. But we're going to push that back and ask a ninth grader to specialize in something already. Uh, if you look at the average number of kids uh, that go to college, the majority of them are going to switch their major about 2.7 times, I think is the average right now. Uh, my son, Philip, is on his second major and contemplating another switch, uh, which irritates me because he'll be in school forever if he keeps it up. Uh, but that's pretty typical. Kids don't know what they want to study even at the college level, and so why would we think that a 13 or 14 year old knows what they want to study for the rest of their life? And basically the way that the state has changed it up is uh, for a lot of the subjects, they now only require you to have two years of that subject. That's not the way that it works at faith. We still are under the old liberal arts idea that you should take four years of English, four years of history, with the fourth year being government and economics. You should still take four years of history. You should still take four years of religious studies, because we're a religious school, and you should still take four years of science. Whether you're strong in those subjects or you like them or not, it's important to get well-rounded and to have a, a grasp of uh, the various different areas. This, we feel, gives you a better basis for when you go to college, you've had a little bit of flavor of these different things, and it gives you a better chance to maybe then specialize on what you would like to do. Uh, so we are still very much a well-rounded program. We still believe whether you think you're strong in the fine arts or not, it's important to do the fine arts. So it's not an optional, it's a, which fine art would you like to pursue? Everyone has to have fine arts credits to graduate as well, and those can be in music or they can be um, taking the art class that we have here, or if they're particularly talented in art, that may be one of the things they pursue over at Colin. Um, if any of you have been in my room before, if you look on the back wall, you will see two very nice paintings that are back there. One is a charcoal and the other is a, a painting that's done back there. Those were done by a former student uh, who graduated in the first senior class. Uh, Stephanie and she took advanced art classes over at Colin uh, in order to pursue some of the things that she was more interested in. Um, we also teach formal logic and we also have a formal rhetoric class uh, which teaches you how to uh, take your ideas and to express them in a manner that's understood by others. Uh, this is hugely important because um, again liberal arts comes from the, the root word for freedom, libris, okay? So it comes from that. So it's the idea was, in ancient Greece, you got one of two kinds of education. You either got a slave's education, which was all vocational based, or you got a free man's education, which was well-rounded so that you had choices. And we're trying to provide that same thing so that you have choices here. You may not choose to go into being a leader you may not choose to go into something where you have to be the boss or you have to be up in front of people, but you'll be able to by the time you leave this high school. Because it doesn't really matter if you feel comfortable speaking in front of groups or not, you're going to speak in front of groups. It's part of our program. All right? Everyone has to take speech and debate. You're going to get up and deliver speeches. You're going to, you'll get used to it. All right? So that's a part of our program. Everyone has to do these things. Um, Probably the most unique component of our, uh, our program then would be the Omnibus program, which she made some reference to with the books that are over here. But the Omnibus program basically is a way in which we study a period of history. So Omnibus 1 is from creation to the birth of Jesus. We study that period in history, and while we're studying that period in history, we read literature from that period of history. So we read Genesis, because that's you know the creation story. So we'll read Genesis back in there, we'll read ancient Greek literature, we'll read um, like Sophocles and uh, the Oedipus story and the uh, Agamemnon story and all these other ones like that. And we'll read the Odyssey and we'll read um, going into the, uh, the Roman literature then. So we'll read the Aeneid by Virgil and we'll read Livy 
uh, the early history of Rome. And we'll read all these different um, uh, stories that go along with that. And what is important about that is uh, we, just, we just started a, uh, a new book in Omnibus 2, uh, which is called On the Incarnation by St. Athanasius. And it has an introduction written by C.S. Lewis. And what he writes in the introduction is something along the lines of, there is a common misconception among people today that says, you are not smart enough to read what the great minds of the past wrote. So instead, you pick up a textbook written by an inferior writer and try to learn what the ancients said. And the fact of the matter is, these books lasted so long because they were understandable. They're written by people who are actually good at putting ideas together. So when you get a textbook which just goes over those things, you've got inferior people who probably won't last the test of time that are telling you what these ancient people said. Why not read what they wrote? And that's what we try to do. All right, so the first year uh, we studied that period of history. We'll read the Bible books from that period of history. So for uh, year one, it would be um, the Old Testament. Uh, is primarily what they'll do, be doing with Pastor Welmer, and then uh, with me, they'll be studying that period of history and the events that happened and the reading literature from that period of history. Uh, in year two, then, we move into the period from the birth of Jesus to the Reformation era. And so we will read books by the, ch the Church Fathers, many books by the Church Fathers. We just finished testing on uh, Confessions by St. Uh, Augustine. Uh, excellent book where he talks about the struggles that he had with sin early on in his life, and it talks about both kinds of confession. Confession of sin, confession of faith. Excellent book uh, that we just finished reading along that, and now we're moving on to St. Athanasius. Uh, and we'll go through all these other church fathers, St. Benedict, all these others reading uh, different things about that. We'll read the ecclesiastical history of the <coughs> English people and the kings of Great Britain. They'll read Beowulf this year. They'll read um, Robin Hood. Uh, they'll read a number of different books. Now, Robin Hood wasn't necessarily written that long ago, but it's set that long ago. Uh, it was written quite a while ago, but not maybe as far back as some of these other books are. Um, so they'll get to read books like that while also studying that period in history. They will be with Pastor Wilmer again for, uh, they do the first half of the year is books of prophecy, and the second half of the year is the uh, two of the Gospels, and then moving into Acts and, and so forth uh, to kick off the fulfillment of those prophecies in the person of Christ. Uh, year three, then, is um, heavy emphasis on American history, but it's from the period of uh, the Reformation through the modern era, and very heavy emphasis on American history to make sure that we meet state and national expectations. In addition to the books that we're reading during that time, they also then will study an American history textbook as well to go along with that, uh, just to make sure that we fill in a lot of the facts and so on and so forth that go along with that. Uh, and then the year th four readings, which are my favorites, uh, year four are uh, <clears throat> my favorite ones, but they concentrate on three different areas. Uh, throughout all periods of history. So instead of studying a period of history, they study the following topics. First of all, government, all right, because government's one of the things you're supposed to study. So we read The Republic by Plato. We read The Prince by Machiavelli. We read uh, The Communist Mar uh, Manifesto by Karl Marx. Uh, we read all these different books that are about different ways that uh, people have structured government and so forth. What are we reading right now? the actual documents that our country was founded on. And they are memorizing, by Friday, the preamble to the Constitution, which they will have to say to me on Friday. Uh, so we actually study those documents and we study what they actually say. And then in the next unit, they'll be moving on to the Federalist and Anti-Federalist papers, which were the primary documents that were published in the newspapers to convince people to tell their representatives to vote for the new Constitution. So they're going to actually read those instead of reading what somebody says about it. Now, if you look at a typical, even honors level or AP uh, history book, what you're going to find is an excerpt saying, in Federal 66, Hamilton said such and such. That's what you're going to find. Well, we're not going to read an excerpt. You're going to read Federal 66. All right, so you get a chance to actually see these things. Primary source, 
Documents are hugely important. That's the first topic. Then we're going to read government uh, uh, economic related books, uh, such as The Wealth of Nations, which is not an easy read, but we're going to we're going to plow through good sections of The Wealth of Nations, which is one of the premier books on which um, economics is based nowadays. So the read different things like this. We also pick up all the remaining books of the Bible that pastor didn't already teach uh, in years one and two. We'll pick those up in years three and four um, to carry those through as well. Uh, then we also study world religions. So that's where they'll read the Quran. That's where they will read about some of the other beliefs that others have. Uh, we hit the Quran a little in year two right now. Um, the test they just took, they had to list the five pillars of Islam. Um, so we do hit some of those different things in there so they understand uh, what these other faiths uh, teach as well. And then uh, the final topic is uh, Christian, uh, the, the logical reasonable defense of your faith. So we're going to teach them um, Christian dogmatics or, I can't think what the other term we're looking for is. Apologetics. Apologetics, there we go. Apologetics. We uh, do apologetics where we will teach them how to show, not that your faith is true, you can't prove that your faith is true using logic and reason. What you can show is it's not unreasonable. All right, because we believe our faith on the basis of witnesses. There's tons of stuff that you believe on the basis of somebody telling you it without actually researching it. And so what we can show is these people were willing to die rather than recant what they said. That gives you some, some degree of security that maybe what they were saying is true. Because people don't usually lie to get themselves violently killed. All right, when all they would have to say is, you're right, we stole the body to get out of it. People lie to gain things for themselves, all right? So it gets you to the point of seeing that uh, there's only three things you can believe about Jesus. He was a liar, which makes him the most evil, vile person that's ever lived on the earth because he told people to put their eternal salvation in trust in him. I think we can see from his actions he's not that, all right? Or he was insane. If you read what he said and the way that he spoke, we've even had psychologists nowadays analyze and say there's no way he was insane. Well, then there's only one other option. He was telling the truth. All right, so we can show things like that and show that your faith is reasonable. You can't prove your faith. Uh, that's why it's called faith in Jesus, not fact in Jesus. It's based on some facts, but it is still faith. Uh, but you can show that your faith is reasonable when you talk to us. Um, one of the big frustrations that students in our school encounter is the fact that nobody else teaches this kind of stuff anymore. So they go out and they tell people, well, you can't actually say that because, see, that's a fallacy, a logical fallacy, and you can't say those two things are true at the same time. You don't tell me what I can say. That's the response that they get, right? You can't say, well, it's not possible to actually hold both of those points of view at the same time. See, that's what's called a logical fallacy. And because nobody else learns it, they don't understand what you're saying, and it frustrates our students. Uh, so you have to get a little bit more creative in how you try to explain it to them. Uh, but we do teach those types of things as well. Um, so uh, that's, that's a little bit about our curriculum um, that we have here. Uh, we also mentioned you do have to get, uh, we do health every other year, so we'll do the freshman and sophomore every other year will take health together. It's a one semester class. They're about to take their final test in it uh, and be wrapped up because we're doing it in first semester of this year right now. Uh, but it will go through from a Christian perspective all the things that you're expected to, to study. You know, we study about um, you know drugs and alcohol. We study about all the uh, health and safety. We study about fitness. We study about um, uh, nutrition, all those different things that you would be expected to study in a class like that. Uh, your PE credits can be picked up through the various sport offerings that we have. Uh, we've actually got, I think there's eight of the boys right now that have really got into weightlifting because we have a weight room downstairs and they're doing that three times a week very faithfully down there. Uh, which is, is quite interesting, trying to fit everyone in there at once, so we have to kind of do them in two shifts now. But um, that's a way to earn it, uh, or you can participate in these outside sports and so forth. Uh, the final thing I want to say is with regards to when you go to Colin. Um, when they start taking classes over at Colin, there are basically three main purposes for why we decided to do this. First of all, there are certain classes 
that only one or two people will want to take. It is way too expensive for us to hire a teacher to come in and teach to two people. Colin is dirt cheap. So we can send you over there to take a class that maybe a lot of people don't want to take. Uh, Micah is taking pre-calculus right now. Um, there uh, weren't any others that wanted to take pre-cal this year. Um, and so that, that was a good choice for that. Uh, one of the classes that Olivia is taking is American Sign Language. Wasn't a huge demand for American Sign Language here, but she has an interest in that because she thinks she might use that, you know, to actually work with the deaf at some point. Uh, this is a possibility of that. So a class like that. Um, my son and Walker are taking a Foundations of Music course. Uh, they're taking that because it's the prerequisite before they can take the music theory courses that they want to get into. Um, so they want to do some music theory and learn how to actually write some music. We have a very musically talented group of students in our school right now. Uh, actually, it's the first time ever every single student is in choir. Usually there have been like two or three that weren't in choir, but we actually have every single student in choir this year, and quite a few of them are in strings and, and uh, outside bands and stuff as well. Uh, so there, that's, um, another, that's one of the reasons for taking it, classes that we could not offer here. It also allows you to take more advanced classes. Right now, we currently are teaching biology, chemistry, physics, and astronomy here at our school. However, there's different ways that you can get your diploma from faith. If you want a distinguished diploma, you can't take astronomy as your fourth science. You have to take a strong science. So you have to go to Colin to take a class like that, all right? So you have to take a college level course if you want to graduate distinguished. Distinguished uh, is the highest diploma level that you can get. You get a special seal on your diploma, and that's for people who took the hardest class that was available all the time, pretty much. All right, so they took all the honors, all the advanced honors, and then they took tough courses over at Colin. Um, my son made it as far as Calculus three over at Colin uh, with, with courses there. So those are, are some of the reasons to do it. Another good reason to have them take classes over Colin. So the third reason would be it allows them to experience a little bit of what the world is like while still having the shelter of being able to come back and talk about it here. All right. So they're able to go over and say, you would not believe what they were talking about today. And I'd be like, yeah, actually, I kind of would. But let's talk about it anyway. Uh, and they're able to come back and talk about some of those things and uh, you know, discuss what, they're, uh, what they've been dealing with over there. And it gives them a chance to kind of deal with those things while they're still surrounded by their core group of Christian friends here. Um, so I think that's a, a benefit to call them as well. Um, you want me to field questions at this time, or are there any questions? Is there any curriculum? We do not currently do SAT prep. We've talked about it a bunch of different times. Um, the main thing with the SAT prep, uh, the people that have done it before have done it outside of school. Uh, they've gone to different organizations and done SAT prep stuff. By taking the PSAT, that gives you a little bit of it. It also gives you an account where you can sign in and then do the exercises that they give you and so forth to, uh, to help practice. Um, and Khan Academy has what SAT itself says is the best SAT prep program out there. The one from Khan Academy, they said, is the only one that is actually, um, actually has statistics backing that it improves scores. Um, but we're currently, we would do that if we had somebody that wanted to do an SAT prep class or something like that, we would have somebody that does that. We're, that's one of the disadvantages of being small with that is basically when you, you talk about all these different things that they do, guess who's been in charge of all of those things? And I'm 50 now, I can't, I can't do everything. So uh, if we get other people involved to do SAT prep, that would be great. I know we're, we are uh, hoping to expand our offerings to students for college prep here pretty quick. So uh, we're hoping to bring somebody on and. Uh, have them help with some of the college prep stuff. Because I've been doing all of that as well as everything else, so. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate that. Thank you for uh, bearing with us this evening. Uh, I know there's a lot going on. We have also, we'd love to hear from Micah, uh, Micah Cumming, and um, 
Micah is a senior this year, and I'll let you tell your own story a little bit, Micah. But um, very proud of Micah and the young man that he has become. Uh, leadership roles he stepped into as a senior here at Faith High School. Um, so, Micah, why don't you come on up here and, and tell us a little bit about your story, about why you came to Faith Plano at, at Faith Lutheran High School, that, uh, how that happened, and, um, and, and what you like about our high school. Haven't you all had that experience when that real team spirit, whether it was your college years or your group of friends, that finally got to your team together? Now let me tell you that this is the type of environment and bond that, it, that is within our high school. The bond that is invisible but very real when you're inside it. The bond that inside jokes where you simply can't get it at a crowded public school. We have the unique bond of being classically grounded in the Christian and Lutheran doctrine and the bond that is soaked in loyalty to our Savior and to our high school. This is what separates us from our public school, from the other public schools, and it's something that I will fight for over and over. Now, as you might know, for my freshman year, I went to public school at Allen instead of attending here. Why? Well, my mom and I were thinking that Allen was better because it would be a good eye-opening experience and I would get to see the outside real world. But looking back on this, there was hardly anything further from the truth. The first reason for this, our middle schoolers and I were certainly exposed to the outside world. The students and I do not live in cardboard boxes like some people would think. Rather, we do interact and socialize with many different people, some of which themselves have attended public school. But more importantly, our high school allows students to take dual credit at the college campus. So we see and interact with all the different types of people there, however crazy and awkward and dot dot dot. <laughs> however, our school offers the foundational and supportive roles of Lutheran friends and Lutheran teachers to help and correct things such as bad habits. Additionally, our school usually pays for these dual credit courses as opposed to the private schools. The second reason. <clears throat> There is hardly any truth in saying that it's good to expose them to the dirty and deceitful world. This only encourages their terrible behavior that you learn from there. This exposing to the real world society will continue for four years through the public, through the public high school years. The mental processes of a freshman are not mature enough to, the third reason, the mental processes of a freshman in high school are not mature enough to weigh the good and bad effects of actions or see dangers in taking risks. This means that while adults can talk with children about great important topics, the children are severely hampered by trying to solo public school, and teachers won't spend time one-on-one -on -one or directly direct you to your Savior, Jesus Christ. Our high school, through the wisdom of Mr. Merritt, paves a foundation for people who are moral, godly, and have good decision-making. So what are the other major differences of our school? Well, the best thing, and you won't find it at any other school, is the omnibus program, which is not just a grade for us, but it's the foundation and guide for our lives. Omnibus class is easily the hardest and most intense class, and a typical night would include reading, pa reading pages and answering questions, which guide you to think critically and to think critically critically about practical, theological, and societal issues. This intense, this intense class directs students to grow in maturity, discipline, and training. The other two classes which are unique to our school are also logic and rhetoric. Lastly, the good times and memories we make, especially our choir tour, our Six Flags trips, our lock-ins, our choir, our sports, and our dancing are so enjoyable, but they also bring us so closely together that it makes it feel like home, and I'm loving every single second of it that I'm still in this high school. Thank you. Thank you. If I could just keep you uh, on, the, on the spot here. So, um, what, what um, your 
you're a senior, and uh, um, what are you planning to do uh, after after Facebook in high school? So my career, I want to be a pastor, and when I go off to college, I'll likely go to Wisconsin, and from there I'll get a teaching degree so I can uh, get some experience, make some money, take some time off from being educated to educate being, and then after that I'll go back to Fort Wayne Seminary to be a pastor. I know someone who had that very same plan. It's a great, great plan. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's great. And um, uh, as far as um, have you taken the SATs? You do okay. You're going to get into college. They yes, have rejected certainly. you. And did, did you find that in some ways, just the curriculum itself had helped prepare you for the SAT? Mm -hmm. Just uh, and one thing, you're preparing for it intensely. But, did you take other classes, or did, did you take special? Did you go to the Khan Academy, or did mm -hmm. you? So on Khan Academy, I uh, practiced reasonably, not super excessive or anything. But Khan Academy actually raised me by 100 points from uh, my first time taking it to the second time taking it, and it's out of uh, 1600. Okay. So 100 points is pretty reasonable. That's, that is very good. Yeah. And uh, in addition to being a senior this year, uh, you're on student council, is that right? And you have... Well, the president. The president. Yeah. yeah. And... That's a lot of fun, but a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Uh, and uh, have you had opportunities as a student-led <coughs> student council working with Mr. Merritt to bring about some of the ideas and some of the thoughts that you have as a student? Certainly. You think so. the students have an opportunity working with faculty and staff to maybe do a few more things that maybe student council gets to do even in seventh and eighth grade? Certainly. Uh, student council in the middle school is um, quite limited, I would say. Um, student council in the high school, it's, um, directed at the student's interest and the path that the majority are going. And so you have a lot more freedom to do that. One of the things that I've made happen in the high school is um, I've added another prayer to the morning devotions. We do Luther's morning prayer now, and then during lunchtime we do the eyes ball, which we did in middle school. It's just, just another addition, and I've attempted to move more along in that direction. Okay. And are, are there, uh, we have our own students to get to show up, but uh, do you have any classes that have online students in them? Yes, we have seven online students in total. We have two of them in our uh, upper class um, omnibus. We also have offer the chemistry and astronomy classes have online, and then our Latin have online. The big months with giant screen TVs, live interaction with that. and. Um, Aren't, uh, are any of those students uh, coming to the high school dance in, in yes. December? Yes, we purposely invited them. Uh, and students them from California yes. and from Wisconsin. Illinois and Wisconsin and all uh, coming uh, coming Missouri. online but joining us uh, for the dance. Which is really good because we have a severe shortage of girls in the high school here. So <laughs> it's good to be bringing these no, outside. Except the old girl <laughs> enrollments. Uh, Thank you, Micah. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right. Uh, my job to kind of wrap us up here, and uh, a couple things. First of all, uh, we have these green packets. Some of that information is the uh, similar to the kinds of packets that you had maybe when you first enrolled here and the elementary school, a little different information in there. Uh, there is a different um, there is a different dress code, it's the same style, but there are some different colors. Uh, one example of how the students had an opportunity to influence even policy, uh, we had the students propose to the school board uh, an idea to include black trousers uh, as, uh, and skirts as part of the dress code. And that was a student-led idea. It was taken to our school board, and school board school board approved that. 
So another idea that the, the students were able to interact um, and um, make some, I think, good, a good and positive uh, changes for our school. I also think it shows uh, some of the initiative that our high schoolers are willing to take, uh, leadership roles that they're willing to take on, and pursue things in a godly way. You know, they, it, it was done very orderly and with a great respect, uh, and really appreciate uh, the way in which our high schoolers go about doing those kinds of things. <clears throat> um, I have. Rather than reading through all of these, I have just written through a frequently asked question sheet. Many of these items um, have been covered, but um, I'll send that along with you as some information for, uh, for you to look over. Also tonight, uh, if you would please, before you leave, every family that came here tonight would complete this open house survey. It would help us in planning futures, open houses, ways to communicate our high school with others that maybe couldn't come. <clears throat> and I would especially say to you that I know all of you are friends with people. We're a very close-knit community here at Faith Plano. If someone wasn't able to come tonight, and you thought it was a very good informational night tonight, and you learned something you didn't know, uh, you appreciated something about the high school that, that maybe you didn't know before, that you would tell someone, right? I mean, word of mouth is important. Um, and remember that we, one of the great blessings that we've seen in our high school is this year is our, our largest enrollment <coughs> since the high school's founding. And a lot of that has happened because parents like you were excited about your own students being enrolled. You talked to other parents and they enrolled too. So that, that helps the student body, right? When you use your, own, uh, use your own abilities to talk to other people about the good news. It's like the gospel. You're excited and, and uh, you know, the, the great news that Christ has redeemed you from your sin. You tell someone else that good news. Um, and here, excited about what's happening at, at our school, please share the good news uh, with someone else. But uh, please do fill out this um, open house survey um, before you leave tonight. And I'll just create a pile right here. And you can put it up here. Um, and I'll take this. All right. I kept you here a little over an hour. Um, I'll open up to a few questions from anybody here if you have any questions. And and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Anybody, anybody have any questions? I thought it answered in there, thank you. Okay. I was wondering about Latin, but I did see still three more years of Latin. Okay, yes. It's important to remember, you know, one of the things uh, that's been brought up, but when you, when you go to college, university, and I've had now four of my own students, my own uh, children, go to college, start thinking about when you're a freshman, you start building that transcript. And the kinds of things that you need to have on that transcript in order to get into college or university, if that's where you're headed. And, and so, yeah, they are going to want to see so many years, usually three years, if not four years, <coughs> preferably, of the same foreign language. The same foreign language. So it doesn't help to start out in one and switch, but, but to keep that foreign language going. Um, I do know that if you go to Texas A&M and you've had four years of Latin, that there, there's a um, uh, certain coursework you actually get out of and not have to do as part of requirement because you've had four years of Latin. So, um, anyway, building that college transcript. And when you start thinking about the courses that you're taking, you want to make sure that you have um, taking the kinds of courses to get into the college that you may be thinking about going to. You might also have a question. Just, yes, have, just have a comment. Um, with Micah going to Allen, which was probably no different than This Allen. is Micah's dad, Dave, okay, for those of you who don't know it. Dave coming. Um, with Micah going to Allen, you realize all the high schools around here are enormous. Um, first time I saw 
Plano East, I thought, what university is this? <coughs> um, these are major institutions. Um, and first thought as well, there's plenty of opportunity. Look at all the, the facilities and things, so there's a lot of opportunity. But, um, you know, a basketball team still only got five people on the court at one time. <laughs> and if you're not the best of the best of the best, um, there's very little opportunities actually in these big, big. Um, Same is true in music and so many other fields. Yes. Yeah. So you think that there must be plenty of opportunity because there's plenty of, of things offered. But in some respects, it seems less because mm -hmm. if you're not the absolute 1% of everything, you're just right in the middle of everything. Wow. So. You have to specialize. Yes. And yeah, so plus I, they make you specialize. So yeah. the basketball coach doesn't want you playing football or whatever. Right. So I think that there's actually more opportunity in a smaller group that I would have never thought of in the first place. So small usually means limited, but it's not, small not is true. Limited, is but it? it's not yeah. so much the case here. And so it, it, the first time you think about it, it doesn't really make sense, but it does make sense because they, they bring such a, a good things out of the students because they're not just one of a thousand or ten thousand or whatever the number is of these facilities. So. I know my son Nathan says the best thing about Faith Lutheran High School is that he could do everything. I mean he got to participate in everything and he's still trying to do that this past weekend he, he ran a, a duathlon and uh, just loving sports and um, so it, it is true that you get a lot of opportunities. It gives you a lot of confidence then to do other things post high school. My son Nathan as well, like he's doing orchestra at UTB because he learned to love music here. And he's kind of a late bloomer on on that. But now he's gung ho. So I do the classical model of education and the Christianity, I don't know, it seems to kind of invigorate you because <laughs> he's trying all kinds of stuff. He's taking a dance class. And so he's enthusiastic about everything. And I think the school here helps You usually them. hear peer pressure being a bad thing, but there's positive peer pressure. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Perfett uh, didn't think he was going to be a choir either, but he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Most any student that comes to our junior highs, I'm meeting with a new family. I'm very honest with them. And I say, you know, one of the first and, and, and only complaints or at least biggest complaints I hear is a lot of homework. And um, I mean, th that is the, the number one uh, probably pushback we get even in our junior high. Micah, have you had a lot of homework at, at the high school level? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> but it's good for you. Okay. So, now, you have a lot did you say that when you were in seventh grade? Yet. <laughs> at the time, I thought I did. Looking back on it, nothing compared to now. Okay. But even though you have homework, you just did, you've, you, you've weathered it, um, and, and you say, well, it was, it was hard, but I accomplished something. Yeah. So it's also interesting, too, we went to higher things, and so um, that was my first time. But um, what was interesting is these are all high schoolers across the nation, went and, uh, went to Chicago this past year. Uh, so... Um, these are good, solid Lutheran people going to higher things. But what I noticed um, about the faith group, one, um, maybe it's just the group, but there was a lot of natural leadership in that. And so I think leadership's twofold. One is the potential, and then two is giving them a space or opportunity to work into leadership. And so I, I could see that amongst that group. And what's also interesting in the the talent contest, um, boy, I mean, there's piano players to uh, uh, multiple choir uh, pieces, and so um, they really dominated that whole um, talent contest, and I, I was really impressed by the amount of um, yeah, I was too. Talent that so much dominating. The, uh, the other thing unique about that is talk about peer pressure. We have uh, some families that come to Faith Lutheran that come from families that may not be Christian families, but they are willing to come and hear about the Christian faith. What was unique about, I think, this last year's going to this youth gathering 
is that we took along uh, a couple uh, young folks in high school who had come to faith Plano, not hearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, but in time have come to believe that he is the Savior, and even willing to attend a week-long youth retreat with them. That's peer pressure, um, and, and a lot of that, a lot of that core group was our faith Lutheran high school students. So that that's good to see as well. Yeah, they really stood out amongst all the other groups. Yes. Um, I've taught in the Plano Public High Schools, and um, <laughs> I know um, you do what you got to do, um, but. In terms of rigor, they did not let us assign homework. Um, they cut out Shakespeare because it was too hard. Um, we read the same version of the Odyssey in ninth grade that I just read with my third graders here. Um, and they only read excerpts, we read the whole thing. <laughs> so in terms of rigor, it's, it's a completely different world here. Um, but a lot of schools that I've seen that have similar rigor don't have the same kind of student body. There's a competitiveness and a kind of a dog eat dogness. And that's not that's not this place at all. So thank you. Thank you. Any of anybody else have a, a comment or a question? If you don't have it now, you know, we're not going anywhere. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And so uh, I'd be happy to answer your questions after tonight as well. Yes, ma'am. And just a quick, um, how many high school students do you have enrolled currently? And then approximately, like, what, no, you know, you can't say for sure depending on what classes they're taking, but they approximately start around this time and they're usually here till five? Or? Uh, no, our, our uh, the, the high school, school, school starts 15 minutes earlier and ends 15 minutes later. So we okay. start at 8.15 and we dismiss at 3.45. Okay. Now, the exception would be if they're taking classes at Cullen that go till later. Oh, okay. um, my son, because he was in football practice for two hours every single day of the week during this semester, could not take any classes really on weekdays very easily. And so he actually takes a Saturday class. His class is actually on Saturday. Uh, Walker's classes in the evening, the rest of them are all afternoons. So the way that we schedule the juniors and seniors is we try to do their core classes in the morning and then they have the afternoons or when they take their classes at Colin. And they're what, usually what back by four or five. But honestly, it's hard to get them to leave sometimes because they just oh, want to hang it's out. Not sometimes, <laughs> always. Yeah. I'm sitting here going, I'm here at five o'clock, why are you all still here? <laughs> yes, I will. They love yes. hanging out together. It's time to go. <laughs> How many students are in And Ellen? then when they do finally leave, then they'll have, uh, you know, Micah house. say something like, hey, you want to go to Chick-fil-A? And everyone will pile and go there. And I'm like, fine, as long as you're not here anymore, that's fine. <laughs> but, uh, we have 23 students that are on campus, plus the seven online ones right now. So. so in the mornings, are they all together, the four grade levels? They start together because we do, we don't attend the school-wide opening because we start earlier. We do a high school school-wide opening, so they're all together at the okay. beginning. And then the juniors and seniors go to astronomy first period, and I have the others for omnibus. Pastor comes in second period to do the second half of omnibus, and that's when I switch over to omnibus with the older students. So um, they they move around uh, depending on what period it is, whether it's their like math is everyone has math the same period, so they just go to whoever their math teacher is that period. We have a math block that goes all the way down to. I don't know, sixth grade or something like that. We we tried to do a block so that they can go to their classes that way. Right. Um, but yeah, we also have uh, okay. in that twenty three number would include the three Shaltanises, and the Shaltanises are part of our homeschool partnership, which allows homeschooling families to take individual classes uh, at our school if they want, if they wish. So. Final comments. Don't forget to fill out your survey, and thank you for coming tonight. Uh, if I may, let's uh, let us close with a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things. The greatest gift you have given to us is the gift of your Son for our redemption, for our salvation. We thank and praise you for our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift that he is to us here at Faith Lutheran School. 
thank you for the families who partner with us and for the students who come here. We thank you for the opportunities to see young people grow up into adulthood and to see you form them here at Faith Lutheran School and within our high school. What a joy it is to be able to watch that happen, your own hand active in real time. We pray that uh, you would encourage us. We pray that as we have uh, made uh, good starts here at Faith Lutheran High School, that you would also guide and direct us as we move forward. Think about new and different opportunities, partner with new families. We pray that um, you would be with us throughout all of that, that what we say and do here at Faith Lutheran School may be done to your glory. Be with us tonight as we travel home. These things we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming tonight.